I don't want to come across as though I am invalidating your feelings or your need for connection because I totally get it. Or when it's unhealthy and when it becomes an obsession, it is not healthy for you or the person you're going to be in a relationship with. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are doing well. I'm super excited to be making this video and super excited to be back on YouTube. I'm going to be trying to post twice a week. Usually I only post on a Sunday. I'm trying to challenge myself and step it up a bit for this year. So I will be posting either Wednesday and Sunday or Thursday and Sunday. I want to be adding more value and bring you guys more content on this channel. So today I am talking about how I have finally made peace with being single. But before we get into the video, I want to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. So I want to talk to those who are maybe having a really hard time. On this channel, we are talking about leveling up and focusing on ourselves. And this concept for some people may be very, very difficult because you alone cannot help yourself. And it is so daunting to watch everyone be so optimistic and positive about the new year or you just feel lost. Trust me, I've been there. But therapy helped me a lot out of the dark hole that I was in. So if you are looking for an online licensed therapist where you do not have to leave the comfort of your own home, you better check out BetterHelp. With BetterHelp, you can access their network of over 20,000 licensed therapists. It is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional therapy done securely online. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own personal licensed professional therapist. If you've ever searched for a counsellor in your area, you know it can take up to weeks or even months just to get a phone call back. But with BetterHelp, you can start communicating in as little as 48 hours. BetterHelp is available for clients worldwide and you can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches. They make it easy and free to change therapists if you need to. It's way more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is also available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life right now. So you can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com forward slash Breenie Lee. So visit betterhelp.com slash Breenie Lee. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P. And join the 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional therapist. And I'll take you a little bit on a journey. For those of you who have been following me for a few years, you will know the journey that I have been on being single. And the last video I actually talked about being single was probably in 2018 or 19. And I finally came to the place of truly, truly, truly accepting and actually being happy being single because there's a difference, okay? There are some people that are single, but they're angry. They're single begrudgingly, basically. They're single and they're up upset, they're single and they're sad, they're single and they're doubting, they're single and they're just not happy. And there's other people who are just single and they're content. And I always dreamed to be the latter group. And I was before my previous two year relationship kind of ended that for me. So I did finally get to the place of being content and truly enjoying being single and being by myself and not feeling the desperation or the need to have somebody with me. And then fast forward a couple of months, I actually got into a relationship. So part of me was thinking, oh, okay, well, it really, it does work. Like what they say, when you're not looking, when you're actually truly happy, that's when they will show up. Unfortunately, it was a counterfeit. I don't know if she said, that. Unfortunately, it wasn't a real deal and I found myself single again in 2021. That was last year, June. So I've been single for six going on seven months, but I have been truly single since October. And that means completely stop dating, completely not talking to anybody, completely, completely single. Because if you guys will be honest, most of you are single, but you're not bloody single, right? You're single, but you're dating. You're single, but you're talking to someone. You're single, but you're still entertaining your ex or your ex guys or your ex people in a party. And no judgment, I guess we've all been there, but I feel like we need to get out of that place because you can't expect to meet the person for you while you still have placeholder in their place. And you may be thinking, oh, I'm just keeping them there so that, you know, when I do finally meet the person, I can get rid of them. One, that's selfish. And two, that's not going to happen because you're not going to be able to see the right person if you've got Mr. Wrong sitting in his seat. Okay. Anyway, so I've been single officially 
since October, October, November, December, January. So I've been single, single, single as a Pringle for four months. And I am super happy. Honestly, I had to wean myself off men. I'm gonna be making a video soon about how I used to be a pick me. <laughs> it sounds funny, but I used to be a pick me. I used to worship men. And how I knew that I was worshiping men was that it consumed almost 75% of my brain. And if that's not obsession, I don't know what that is, okay? So getting to this place of truly being content was a decision and a choice that I made specifically in prayer and with God. And I'll start off by saying how I got to this place for anyone that may be wondering and wanting to get to that place was two videos ago, I made a video talking about like, obviously like focusing on yourself, not needing anybody. And there was someone in the comment that was like, how much work am I have to do myself to earn, um, um, da, 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 da. And I just said, sweetie, my beloved sweetie, because I've been there. I've been there multiple times. Like, why don't I need to do the work? But in this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about a bit of a mindset shift. And hopefully you guys will be able to join me on the single and content, the single and happy journey. I mean, the single, single one, the one where you're not actually talking to any men. Okay, so after my breakup, I was obviously healing. And part of my healing, I was watching this lady called Anointed Fire. Her name is Tiffany Buckner. Okay, okay, rewind a little bit. I sense in my spirit that, okay, a thought came to my mind and it said, research the idolatry of marriage and so i typed it in youtube and there wasn't many videos at all there was a few I watched a few and i was like okay yeah, yeah yeah cool cool but this woman had like an hour and 40 or hour and 50 minute video on it and i remember i was in my car driving back from my sisters in milton Keene, and i was playing and i was playing it and i was like <laughs> Oh my God, I've been idolizing marriage. I've been idolizing men. I've been idolizing relationships. And that's why it was one of the talking points of things that were leaving in 2021. But I was like, Phew. the way she broke it down, I'll leave the link in the description box because it literally blew my mind. And I didn't think that I was idolizing men. I just said, I just was like, I just want a relationship. Is that just too hard? Like, God, is it so hard to send me the man of my dreams? Like, is it that difficult? I just need someone to hold me and hug me. Is it that difficult? I'm not idolizing marriage i just want it and in the video she broke down a lot of things and i was just like wow god yeah i'm an idol worshiper and i think that was the catalyst of actually understanding that i have a problem <laughs> it wasn't just that i was lonely it wasn't just that i desired a man or desired a husband or wanted someone to keep me company or i was just lonely it was actually a lot deeper than that and it went straight to my psyche and the way that I've been operating, I will say, in my entire life, really putting relationships and men on a pedestal. And if you guys have followed me for a, a long amount of time, I do talk about this, but when I was younger, um, I didn't feel safe. I didn't feel safe, I felt neglected and I felt alone. So what did I do? I ran to men, give me attention, tell me you love me, give me a kiss, hug me. I just want attention for men. And that natural need, for attention turned unnatural and toxic and so I thought I had dealt with it even before I got into my last relationship but even being in the relationship I wasn't seeking attention or validation from men I was seeking attention and validation from my man and that was not good either because I was literally coming to him half empty like Fill me up, babe. I remember I wrote a post, and I don't know if you guys, if you guys follow me on Snapchat and you remember this post, please, 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 please comment below. I remember saying, sitting there, I was in my room, and I said, guys, I'm literally obsessed with my boyfriend. Like, I'm literally sick. Like, I'm literally obsessed with my boyfriend. And that's not, that wasn't cute. <laughs> I thought it was cute at the time. I thought, yeah, yeah, I just want to be around him because he made me feel good when the times were good. But it wasn't healthy for me to operate and believe that and to do those things and to think like that when it came to men because men are flawed. Men are just like us and they're going to let us down and they're going to disappoint us. And yes, it is okay to desire relationship, to be one with someone that is totally natural. And please don't think that I'm just 
one of those people that I see a lot on social media, especially on Twitter. People saying, all these people saying, just love yourself, throw that in a bin, no, go and land a man, all this kind of stuff. And I'm just like, there's always such an extreme, like you bring it, you bring forth a truth and someone takes it to extreme. Of course, loving yourself does not exist in a vacuum. That's why you also need friends. That's why you also need a family. That's why also marriage is there as well, because two become one. Yeah, you know, but I don't want to come across as though I am invalidating your feelings or your need for connection because I totally get it. Or when it's unhealthy and when it becomes an obsession, it is not healthy for you or the person you're going to be in a relationship with, okay? And that constant, like, selfish desire of wanting someone or something that I had to definitely look at because man cannot make me happy. Like, he cannot fulfil me. He cannot complete me, right? I have to be happy and genuinely whole by myself. And it's, there's a slippery slope when you're in a relationship. Like, of course, the person is there for you to cater to you. But if you don't have enough in you to hold yourself up, to even be in a relationship, but be able to self-soothe and heal things without having to always call your boyfriend or always be in a relationship, that's not healthy. And so it, during the times in which I was single after my last relationship, I feel like you guys have kind of followed the journey because I have spoke about it in my videos that I was dating. It's my lash falling off. I realised my lash was not on properly. Okay, it's all right. So I did talk about, you know, dating apps and I won't take that back. I think you should date after you've gone through a breakup, only if you're healed. But for me personally, I met some really amazing guys on Hinge. So if you guys ever see me promoting Hinge as a sponsor or Bumble or any app like that, know that it's genuinely sincere and I have nothing bad to say about those dating apps. I think that they're genuinely a good avenue for you to meet someone. And if that's your calling and if you feel comfortable with dating apps, then you should definitely go for it however me personally i deleted it four times basically and like all the guys that was on there i just ghosted them because i just couldn't like i just I, it didn't feel right for me to be on the dating app because i felt that god was speaking to me and telling me that my man is not on his dating app so that's no shade to the two dating apps or people that find their pal on there pal their husband on there but me personally i had to listen to my spirit and god was telling me that dating apps is is not where i'm going to meet him and for me to just relax and to trust him so dating the dating apps did feel a void for a little while it was nice to talk to someone it was nice to get male attention but ultimately god was drawing me away to spend more time with him and as i was spending more time with god and praying and fasting i had to cut like i was seeing someone at the time and i had to break it off of him and just be like you know what like me and god need to like focus me and god got unfinished business and i need to just hyper focus so during that time i was praying i was fasting Fasting, I was seeking him and I just wanted him to heal me and the heat part of my healing was to be healed from an addiction to attention addiction to men an addiction to comfort and to actually find my comfort and to find my value and to find my joy in him and I know it sounds cliche you may have heard it before but truly 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 only God can satisfy you right there's a hole inside of us that only God can literally feel most times we use other people and other things other people as void filling but the hole never gets filled like the hole isn't this big but the person is like this small and you drop it in there and you're still thirsty and you're still desperate but then when God comes in and literally fills the hole you actually feel satisfied and that's the, the place that I'm at now like for me four months being single as not talking to anybody is actually a bloody miracle for me I'm not going to lie to you okay um because as much as I've been single in the past I've always been talking to someone There's, I've never really truly been single like by myself so this is a miracle for me and I'm enjoying it so 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 much oh I, I since I've got it here I'm going to show you guys this book that I got a few years ago actually I'll be honest with you, I actually haven't finished reading it. I don't know what I'm waiting for, but I just I read like probably like half of it, and it's just a really really good book. It's by Chidera, and I know her personally, and it's called What a Time to Be Alone. And if you are like single, like you need to get this book because just the way that it's written is super simple to read. Like the pages aren't like it isn't really, it isn't a long read, but it just it's just very confirming or affirming. 
basically I probably should finish reading the book to be honest but I'm in such a happy place where I am truly 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 content and what that looks like to me is that I'm so focused on what I want to do I'm so focused on the plans that I have for this year I'm so focused on the person I'm becoming intrinsically I'm so happy for the revelation of the type of man that I'm looking for and the ones in the past just weren't it and I know that I got those guys based on my own self I guess, or my own, you know, pursuit, persuading um, that we women do when we want something, we want someone. But I think for me, it's really been about letting go and letting God really take control of my love life. And I think a lot of us, we don't trust God to write our love story. We don't trust God. We may trust God in other areas, but sometimes it's something for women that we just, we just don't know. We just, we're not sure God. We're not sure that God, you will actually give me the man of my dreams. I'm not actually sure that you'll give me the man that I truly want and I'm attracted to and will water me and will love me unconditionally but we don't really believe it because we look around on these stupid podcasts of these stupid men talking the most stupid shit and we look around on Twitter and guys are saying this and we look around at our uh, prospects and we can get discouraged and I totally understand that but when you're not focused on it, that's when it will come. But you're not, because some people do this, and I've probably done this as well in the past. Oh God, yeah, I'm just content in you. I'm just waiting for your best. While you're still like that, like you're still looking, like you're you're faking it. You're faking waiting. You're faking being happy by yourself. And that's why you're frustrated because you're like, God, I've been waiting 500 years and this guy is still not here. You promised me. But how was you waiting? And I've been researching or um, studying the story of Cain and Abel. If you don't know, it's a Bible story of the first children on earth, I guess. Cain and Abel were Adam and Eve's first two children. And Cain offered a sacrifice to God and Abel offered a sacrifice to God. But Abel's sacrifice was accepted and Cain's sacrifice was rejected. And when Cain's um, sacrifice was rejected, Cain got sad, he got angry and he got mad. And God was like what's wrong why is your countenance fallen if you do what's good you'll be accepted and then Cain instead of actually repenting and actually doing better next time actually rose up and killed his brother so it's almost like God will reject our sacrifices of being single or being celibate for the same reason he rejected Cain's sacrifice because it wasn't done with pure motives and we can't kid God we can't kid ourselves if you are waiting and you're bitter and you're angry and you're looking around at other people People and you're envious and you're jealous you're not going to get it you're just not because you don't have the right attitude and you don't have the right heart and going back to truly being content and what I've been talking about for my last couple of videos this year is truly about focusing on yourself and I feel like a lot of people you're not busy enough and that's why you are so obsessed with being with someone because you're not busy enough. You need to get busy. You need to get some goals. You need to get a purpose. You need to get a plan. And you actually need to go so super focused on that plan that you don't have time to think about who you do and don't have. Honestly, like me, I'm so focused. I'm so, 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 so focused on what I want to do. And because God has filled that hole, I'm literally just here. And I, I still have people like trying to reach out and message me and you know what I mean? Like send compliments or whatever. But, but I'm not phased by it because I know the journey that I'm on. I don't see myself. I mean, I'm not going to say I don't see myself. Like I said, last year, I don't even know if I should say this. I might be jinxing it. But I remember last year, um, God told me to be single for six months. Um, and something was going to happen. Six months from then was actually February. But four months since I've been single, it might be six months. So it might be March. I don't know. If something happens in March, I should definitely let you know. But at the moment, I'm not, I'm genuinely not seeking that. And I've found contentment being by myself in my own space in my own lane and getting what I needed like attention wise from the Lord and I'll be honest I genuinely want an arranged marriage I want a marriage that God has literally brought together like he's spoken to him he's spoken to me it's only a matter of time before we meet and then that's it I want God to arrange my marriage that's it <laughs> I don't want to do it by myself because the way of the world the way the world that does things is not right okay dating and dating and dating and dating and dating and dating and testing and testing and testing and testing and testing only for you to be heartbroken I ain't got time for it. I'm protecting my heart all year. Like I tweeted on Twitter. I'm protecting my heart all year. I don't have time for any more heartbreaks. I've got no more heartbreaks left in me. The last one did not kill me. <laughs> 
we thank God. <laughs> I may have bended, but I wasn't broken. Hallelujah. But I don't have any heartbreaks left in me, so I'm good to just be by myself. And for those of you that may be watching this, I know there's a few of you that are genuinely content by yourself. And bravo to you. A lot of us are yet to get there, so I'm speaking to those who haven't got there yet. So please bear with me. Um, but also, if you have any comments, like help us out. How did you get content? How did you make peace of being single? Mm -hmm. Last thing I'll say is that I don't see men the same way that I saw them before. I don't see them as objects or things that I can use for my own happiness or joy or attention. I'm being actually very intentional with developing my male friendships and making more male friendships platonic um, without actually thinking oh could this be the one could i don't want to do that and i'm not being gonna lie to you i have a crush on someone right now and i'm just not saying anything but um edit that out on here that yeah i have a crush on someone but it's only a, like a harmless crush like i just think he's an amazing person um but i'm still like keeping my distance you my homie like, my brother in christ like you my bro okay but yeah the way that i see men is not the same but in all of this god is really treat teaching me patience and um, patience is truly a virtue and knowing how to wait and to wait with the right attitude is very 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 key and it's not just patience and waiting because I, I don't feel like i'm waiting i feel like i'm preparing myself and a lot of us we all think that we're waiting for our husband we're supposed to be preparing ourselves for our husband like preparing your life get your finances in order become financially free financially stable you know work on your fitness work on your in your body right and it's not for this thing stop we need to stop say i'm gonna do this so that i can so that when my husband comes this you gotta work on yourself like whether your husband comes or he doesn't come you're doing that for you truly but obviously in because you believe you're gonna be in a relationship with someone down the line that person's gonna enjoy the fruits of what you've done when you're single so focus on buying that house focus on getting a property ladder focus on stacking that money honey okay focus on leveling up upgrade my this year for me is about upgrade i'm upgrade 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 i'm not waiting for anyone i'm not playing small i'm not going to not do this or not get this qualification because I don't want to be too much for my person. The person that God has for me is going to have big enough hands. And I've got a video coming about what God showed me about the person that I'm supposed to marry. And I think it applies to a lot of you guys as well. But I'm going to make that video in a few in a few weeks. But work on you for you. So this video kind of ties in with my last two videos about working and focusing on you. And I hope that I said something in this video that may have, you know, bore witness to what you're feeling or sensing or something that you really want to do. But you don't know how to do it i truly was in a place of like okay how do i truly truly be content you know because I, I've, I've been happy single but contentment was a little far off but um i hope you guys enjoy this video please give it a like please subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys